I recently completed two videos covering some of the dangers caused by smoking. The two conditions that I focused on were lung cancer specifically, and talked a little bit about cancer in general, and heart disease and other vascular problems. I concentrated on these two diseases because lung cancer is the disease that most people associate with smoking, and heart disease and vascular problems are the diseases which basically cause the most deaths from smoking. I used numbers in there saying how many people would die every year from these two conditions. The problem with using numbers is people don't take them in perspective. They don't really understand, well, how many people die from other things. There's plenty of people who come into clinics who will make the comment like, well, I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do this. All I do is smoke. Anyone making this comment or thinking this is underestimating the danger of smoking. Following are a number of slides with simple names on them. Names of conditions or situations that people consider major killers in our society. Most people, if given these conditions on a list and were asked to rank them in order of which are the most dangerous, which kills the most people in our society, are not going to put smoking at the top of the list. They're not going to put smoking in the middle of the list. Smoking will very likely end up on the bottom of this list. What's amazing, though, is cigarettes are killing more people than everything else on this list combined. In America, cigarette smoking kills over 400,000 Americans a year. This gives it the ominous distinction of being the most preventable cause of death in the United States. When people make comments that they don't do this or they don't do that, they're generally talking about drinking. They're generally talking about drugs. This chart is putting this in perspective. On the left, we see how many people die from alcohol-related deaths in this country. This includes deaths from people killed in accidents from alcohol, from people who die from liver disease from alcohol. Next to it are drug deaths. This is including illegal drugs, legal drugs, people who take accidental overdosages or get wrong prescriptions. These things do occur, and they do result in death. But when you compare them to the number of deaths caused by smoking, again, there is no comparison. Getting back to the list of conditions that I showed earlier of what people consider major killers, here is a chart showing smoking compared to what other people consider to be leading killers. On the left is accidents, then pneumonia and influenza, diabetes, suicides, liver disease, murders, AIDS. Combine those together into one bar. That's the one second from the right, and then you put them next to cigarette smoking, and you start to recognize the magnitude of the problem of smoking. It is killing more people than all these other conditions combined. To add a little more perspective to these numbers, this is a chart of the number of Americans killed in wars in the 20th century. World War I first, World War II next, Korea, and then Vietnam. World War II killed more American soldiers than all the other foreign wars in history put together throughout American history. We lose more Americans in one year from cigarette smoking than all the Americans killed in all of World War II. Again, keep in mind, World War II killed more Americans than all the other foreign wars combined. In fact, we will lose more Americans from smoking every year and a half than all of the Americans killed in all wars of the 20th century, combining of World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, combine those numbers together, 24 years of battle deaths. We lose more Americans every single year from smoking than all these other wars combined. An individual smoker's risk of dying from smoking is around 50%. Half the people who smoke, if they don't quit, they will end up dying from their smoking. This doesn't mean the other half get away scot-free either. Many of these people end up with major impairments or totally crippled from smoking, even though something else ends up being their actual cause of death. What many people also will find shocking is when these people die. 50% of people who die from smoking will end up dying in middle age between the ages of 35 to 69, meaning they're knocking off an average of 20 to 25 years of life expectancy from their life. Another way I like to illustrate the magnitude of risk that smoking poses compared to other conditions is using the next series of slides. Young people often take up smoking with the attitude, it really doesn't make much of a difference. There's so many other things that can hurt so what's the difference if they take up smoking or not? 
the way it's often verbalized is the comment, well, why should I quit smoking or why should I not smoke? I could get run over by a truck. Well, what are the odds of dying from smoking compared to getting run over by a truck or other similar excuses used by people to rationalize the safety of smoking? What are the odds that a smoker who is now 20 years of age will not reach their full life expectancy from other conditions that can happen throughout their life compared to the risk that they are going to die from smoking? Well, for every 1,000 20-year-old smokers alive today who do not quit, six will not make their full life expectancy because they will end up being murdered, 12 will die before they should have because they will be killed in an accident, and 500 of them will not make it to their life expectancy because they will die from their smoking. Again, this gives a clear perspective of the magnitude of risk that people face from smoking compared to what people consider major problems in our society. The reason smokers die so much more prematurely from smoking are from the six leading killers in the United States. Our number one killer is heart disease. And again, I cannot say this often enough, more people will die from heart disease from smoking than will die from cancer from smoking. The number two cause of death is cancer, lung cancer being the most recognized cancer caused by smoking, but numerous other cancer sites also a problem. The number three cause of death is stroke, and the same mechanism which causes heart disease is also responsible for strokes, and that's covered in the cardiac video. Accidents, automobile accidents being the number one type of accidental death. Now, not many people will associate smoking with accidents, but smokers have four times as many auto accidents as non-smokers. This isn't just a wild statistic that nobody understands. Almost every clinic I do, I will ask people, have they ever dropped ashes down on their pants while driving? And the vast majority of them have done this. They know their attention is no longer on the road. It's get the cigarette off their lap before they start their lap on fire. Another way people have accidents from smoking is they throw a lit cigarette out the front window of the car only to have it fly in the back window of the car, and they notice about a half an hour later when their seat seems to be on fire. This causes accidents. Another factor, though, is smoking interferes with the reflexes. There's a certain amount of time before a person sees an obstacle and they hit the brake. If a little kid runs in front of a car, of a driver, there's going to be a certain amount of time before the driver sees the kid and for a reaction to get from their eye to the brain to the patellar reflex in their kneecap to slam the brake pedal on. When a person smokes, it takes them 50% longer to hit that brake pedal. There is a slowing of reflexes. There may be a situation which isn't the smoker's fault. Someone is cutting them off, but because their reflexes are impaired, partially from their smoking. They may not be able to avert an accident that may end up causing property damage, that may end up hurting their car, that may end up costing them their lives. One other factor is smoking does interfere with night blindness. It takes people longer to adjust to darkened conditions. So people who have trouble with vision, especially at nighttime, will find that smoking may play a factor in here that could, again, result in accidents that would not have happened if they had their full capability of sight when they weren't smoking. After automobile accidents, the next leading cause of accidental death in our society are fires, and many fires are caused by smoking. Some estimates say that over half the people who are killed in fires in America, those are fires that were started by people's cigarettes. The next leading killer in our society are the chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. The famous ones here are emphysema and bronchitis. Smokers have much more of both of these conditions. And when it comes to emphysema, it is the primary cause of emphysema in our society. There are some non-smokers who get emphysema. There is a certain genetic d deficiency. It's a rare condition where if people have emphysema running in their families and people who don't smoke and people who smoke, they may have that genetic tendency of, this, of enzyme deficiency. But that is a rare occurrence. The vast majority of emphysemas that occur in our country and throughout the world are smoking-induced diseases where smoking is literally destroying the lung, ripping it out of shape. What it feels like to have emphysema, the way I always try to get people to understand this, because most people think emphysema is a disease where they cannot inhale air. That's not the problem. Emphysema is a disease where they cannot exhale air. And to understand the implication and what that means, I always tell people, take a deep breath, hold it. Take another breath on top of that breath without letting the first one out. Hold that one too. Then take one more breath, hold that, and then let the air out. If done correctly, the second breath is very difficult to take. The third breath should be impossible to take. 
That's what it feels like to breathe with advanced emphysema, like that last breath. It gives people a sense of what life is like at the tail end for a person who has emphysema, who may end on living years or decades with totally impaired breathing. And the sixth leading cause of death, infectious diseases such as pneumonia and influenza. The way we get these illnesses is by inhaling bacteria and viruses into our lung that cause these conditions. If you don't smoke, you have a cilia system working, which is helping to sweep this tissue clean. Unfortunately, smokers paralyze and destroy that cilia, meaning they are taking out the first line of defense from these incoming pathogens. If people quit smoking, this defense mechanism will regenerate, but people who continue to smoke are always going to be more prone to getting colds and flus and infectious diseases that are sometimes extremely dangerous and literally one of the leading killers in our society. The smoker's body is often telling them that they need to quit smoking long before they have these life-threatening illnesses. These are health complaints that smokers have more often than non-smokers. They cough more, they have more shortness of breath, hoarseness, chest pains, colder tingling in extremities, digestive disorders, fatigue. It's the body's way of saying the smoke is hurting. Don't do it. But many people don't listen. They just continue smoking to a point that the disease is either too far gone, where it's too late to save their lives, or in the worst case, there's many people who feel like, well, when they find out they have to quit, they're going to do it. The first symptom to some of the diseases that smoking causes is sudden death. It is a heck of a time to decide to quit smoking. It is effective. There are plenty of people who will die from sudden death from smoking. People who had expected to get warning signals early on that they could have prevented this death from occurring. And they either didn't get signals, which sometimes happens, or they didn't listen to what their body was telling them. The way to minimize your risk of having to face your body telling you not to smoke and the discomfort that that causes, and worse, of getting these symptoms and ignoring them and getting the actual conditions that smoking can cause, which end up being crippling and life-threatening illnesses is again to simply make and stick to a personal commitment to never take another puff.